As a former medical student at UCL and a doctor in the NHS, I took a step that some might call daring, others inspiring. So today, let me take you through my six step process that I used to land my first role at a multi-million dollar health tech company. LinkedIn is more than just a professional network. It's the gateway to your future. So imagine reaching out to ex-doctors turned healthcare visionaries and you invite them for a virtual coffee. They say yes and you sit there with them finding out all the secrets that led to their transition. Search for health tech companies, look at their employees, find the ex-doctors and reach out to them. So I would always do a bit of research, find out a bit more about them, look through their profile, look through their experiences and be very genuine and specific with your ask as well. The more conversations that you have and the more people that you meet, the more gaps you will begin to fill in your health tech puzzle. Step two, now we enter the forbidden world of reaching out and sending cold messages directly to the founders and CEOs of health tech startups. But here's the twist, offer something irresistible. Picture this, I'm a medical student, I'm really eager to explore your startup, I have XYZ skills and I could do this, this and this for your startup for absolutely free. In return, I'm looking for mentorship. Now that is very tricky for a founder, especially early stage founders, to reject. Now I get it, sometimes this can be difficult if you're already a full-time doctor, you have responsibilities, you have family and you have bills to pay. Sure, you can't offer your time up for free, but really at the end of the day, if you're truly interested about exiting and leaving medicine into the health tech world, then even spending two hours or four hours a week for a startup should be something that you can manage. And if you're really passionate, you will offer that time up or find some resource to offer that time up so that you can gain the necessary experience. Step three is all about making your mark. It's not just about building your experience, but it's also about broadcasting it. There's this one principle that I follow in life and it's if you don't ask, you don't get. That was step two. If you don't ask for roles, if you don't ask for experience, you won't get it. Now, similarly, there's another principle that I follow in life and it's that if you don't show, no one will know. And what I mean by this is if you don't show people that you have built up these skills or you've gained these experiences or you're interested in these fields, then no one's going to really know that you're interested or you have these skills and that they can leverage you or they can hire you into their teams. So it's all about showcasing your experience and your journey as well. Someone that is sharing their journey as they gain it on social media. Now, in this instance, I would always recommend LinkedIn. That's literally where all of the health tech uh, sort of folk are, the really interesting people within health tech, the pioneers, the leaders, they're all on LinkedIn, right? So if you kept sharing everything that you did, maybe a conference that you went to, a bit of experience that you got, uh, some reflection that you've done, some work experience that you've done, all on LinkedIn, then no doubt that's going to gain some traction within the right space and people are going to start noticing you. Right, step four, we're halfway there now, and this is where the pace picks up. Networking events, fellowships, these aren't just events, they're a launch pad to your career in health tech. What I mean by this is it's an opportunity for you to practice your elevator pitch. It's an opportunity for you to meet and greet people in person and find out who are the pioneers, who are the leaders within health tech, what are they doing, and actually get a face-to-face -face opportunity to speak with them. Right, we're nearly there. Step five, you're not just building a CV, you're building your personal brand. This piece of document that you write needs to speak volumes for what you are, what you can offer and, you know, what sort of asset that you would be to any company that will hire you. So here's where that network that you've been so passionately building in steps one to four is going to come into play. So when you're writing the CV, reach out to these people who have helped you along the journey, ask them to review your CV if they want to or if they can, um, ask them if they can send you a copy of their CV and get them to work on it with you. I think when you're in health tech, your ability to write a CV definitely improves because you'd had to write one to get into that space. Um, but then you also get a very high awareness of what makes a great asset to a company. Also, if you're fortunate enough to have friends in the non-medic space, so I'm thinking about consulting friends, law friends, banking friends, reach out to them. 
likelihood is that they've had to go through a very competitive process to get to their um, sort of roles and the likelihood is that they will be pretty damn good at writing CVs so they can offer you some support as well. Final step, step six, we're finally here. It's now time for you to apply for those wonderful roles that you've been dreaming about and sort of wishing that you were in those positions. It's now time to apply for those jobs. But here's the key, be selective. I think when most people apply for jobs, they take the approach of spray and pray. Now, if you do that, you're going to burn out, you're going to apply to a lot of companies, and you're going to get a lot of rejections. Target roles where your unique skills will shine. Also target roles where you value the company's mission, um, you really like what they do, and also you feel that like the opportunity to learn, to upskill is there. When you do apply for jobs, research the companies intensely, and the likelihood is that if you are applying to a job already within the health tech space, you might already have an awareness of the people, the culture and the mission of the company. So use that to your advantage. Reach out to anyone in your network that might already be working for this company and get them to, you know, have a look at your cover letter, maybe get them to give you some insights about the company if they're allowed to and use that to your advantage as well when writing the cover letter and when sending off your um, application, you want it to be really bespoke to that company. I know a lot of people that will have a document full of different cover letters for different types of roles, different uh, you know generic answers for different questions on um, applications. And I think what happens there is, again, it's that idea of spray and pray. You're not really trying, you're not really 100% and you don't really have skin in the game with that particular application. So your chances of being hired it's not going to be very high. So those are the six steps that I followed to land my first job within the health tech space just over six months ago. In fact, I have an entire video on this where I share my initial three learnings or reflections from my first six months. There'll be a link to it somewhere here. Please check it out. If you are applying to a job, I wish you all the best and I hope that this video is genuinely helpful to you. Feel free to reach out to me if you want to have a chat. Also reach out to me if you want a copy of my CV. I'm more than happy to share that. With that being said, as always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you in the next video.